Hello, my name is Sean, and this is Pecan Peak Ranch. For those of you who are new to this channel, thank you for joining us. If you like what you see here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and join us as we delve into topics on hunting, outdoor life, and ranching in general. Today I've got another video in my series of video reactions, and, and, and I love video. People that know me just know I, I just love it. I, it it's, it's the modern times. It's not. It's no longer okay to tell someone you did this and you did that. You shot this buck. You did that. Where's your Where's your trophy photo? Where's your? And then when you're serious, like this man, that's a friend of mine, Trey Wood, and and you really are engaging with the the, the sport. Uh, photography is a natural progression, and then videography. And this man has a piece of equipment that is awesome. It's a It's a thermal scope of some sort. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, but I know it shot this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna watch Trey's video of this hunt and Just let you watch it straight through without giving you the story He has a write-up that I'm gonna summarize for you and then we're gonna break this video down. So let's get the video started and um, See what you think There you go. <laughs> This action here is before um, he drops the uh, catch dog. So here, what I want to do is uh, is let's go through the, the, the summary of what's going on here real fast, so that you can know the rest of the story. Um, there's quite a lot to, to read. Maybe we'll put it on the screen. You can pause if you want to read it all. But ba basically, this video is 58 seconds shot through a thermal uh, scope of some sort, night vision scope. Trey Wood, kudos to you first of all for just sharing and catching an awesome moment on film for us. This is 58 seconds shot through a thermal scope of some sort. And then there's a hunt that ensues after this that, that he describes here. But the, the, the setup, the first thing that happens is he takes his buddy Brian hunting and they get nothing. So his buddy Brian is like, I don't know if I'm gonna go hunting with you because you're full of it, right? Four dog, five dogs, I guess it was five when I read here. I'll, I'll, I'll explain the dog setup here and the let out and everything, but um, Looks to me like 10 to 12 evenly sized hogs. I mean, these are large hogs, okay? Uh, this is no joke. I mean, there's enough pork in here to feed a city block and uh, to kill a man for damn sure if you got into the mix and a dog. And so listen, so here, listen to the story. So basically, he, he goes hunting with his friend. They get skunked. He's going to redeem himself. His friend goes. I'm sure it's probably cold or whatever. Anyway, they get out to this pecan orchard. And the hogs have been coming to the pecan orchard at 10, eating pecans that are falling off the trees. So anyway, the, uh, uh, they, they get there and pull out the thermal and, and the hogs are there. And so they, 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 they drop the dogs and they drop three dogs. They drop two young males and, a, and an older experienced female, Pearl. Okay, so Pearl goes and, and just goes after it. I mean, she wins these hogs and goes after it. The two young males are... They're not smart enough yet. Whatever. They come running back, and so he's about to be embarrassed in front of Brian again. But anyway, that's not what happened. The the the, the young males got their business together. But the but the but Pearl, this older dog, this older female, goes out to the hogs while they're watching on this thermal, and pr brings the sounder together by herself. So she's like circling and doing what Lacey's do, which is very, is, can, can be very different. It's similar to what Catahoulas do. And there's a Catahoula in this story too. We'll get there in a second. Uh, it's quite a story here. Uh, it's worth a read, but I'll take you through it. So, so the uh, this Mama Lacey dog, I mean, it's an older female, goes out there, rounds up this whole sounder by herself. And then finally the two young males come in to kind of, you know, do the joy run and act like they were part of things. I'm just kidding, but you know how men are. Anyway, 
So the, then they get the three dogs, got the, they got the, they got the, 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 the sounder held. And so uh, I guess it was Pearl and the Ranger and Shiner are the, are the two young males. Okay. And, um, and then, and then um, he had his son's Catahoula. I told you there was a Catahoula in this story. So he had his son's Catahoula named Blair. Son's also a hog hunter, Trey. I mean, uh, Caleb is the son, Trey's the father. But anyway, so they let Blair out. And Blair goes and gets in the mix, and and, and, and anyway, so they've got they've got, uh, and then he lets a fifth dog out named PJ just to so because he feels like he's got everything under control. So let another young dog out. So this is a young dog. It's actually a a, a daughter or son of, of Pearls. But anyway, so he's got a, a pack of five dogs holding this sounder. Um, and you you've seen the video, and 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 these these hogs are mad. The, the dogs are working them. They've got them in a clear opening, which is what's really interesting to me. They're not they're not backed up into brush or anything, which I think is pretty exciting from a shooting perspective. But anyway, so to Trey proceeds to handle this in the normal fashion that he hunts, which, which is with catch dogs. So he's got two catch dogs. Tug and Blitz are the catch dogs. I guess one of them's larger than the other. And, and anyway, so so the story goes on. One can get through the fence game. But anyway, so they, they so they drop these catch. They 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 sneak up 40 yards from this bait up hole sounder. And they drop two catch dogs down. And Tug goes and catches a big white hog. I can't even tell which one's white in this. This is a thermal, so everything just seems dark. But, but um, he, you know, Tug goes and catches this white hog and drop. I mean, but while Tug is holding this white hog, the bay dogs are still holding the sounder together. And Tug is in the middle of these, these mean wild hogs holding on to one of them. And I'm sure it's whipping him around. I mean, he's lucky he wasn't cut to smithereens, and, and, and Trey knows this too, so Trey's running out there, according to the story I'm reading, I'm sure I would be doing the same thing, like, don't kill my dog, don't kill my dog. I'd be running right there in the mix, guns loaded, ready to, you know, back my dog. He'd do it for me, for damn sure. Anyway, he finally gets the, the hogs to disperse, but then Tug loses. He's got to grab one of these big white hogs and loses his hold of the hog, so the hog runs. So anyway, they're back to zero, about to get skunked again, but uh, no worries. The, 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 the dogs went and baited up another hog, one of the hogs that split off. They baited 100 yards out, dropped the catch dogs, get it, dispatch it. I'm sure they use a knife. This is the, the way they roll. Um, and then um, but dogs bait another hog 400 yards away. It was on the other side of the fence. After the only one of the catch dogs can get three. Catch it, dispatch it. Boom. Two hogs uh, down. Incredible hunting experience and just being here and listening to this noise and, 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 and experiencing this is just awesome and I, I, I'm just excited and exhilarated from where I sit just watching this and I was the first time I saw this video and I remember just so proud you know and you can see he says in his notes how proud he is of his dogs and everything I'm proud of him I'm just his friend and I'm proud of him so this is like awesome so uh, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of things um, Trey and Caleb and you know they hunt kind of traditional style which which I don't because I don't use catch dogs I'm not opposed to it I've hunted with catch dogs I love catch dogs but I don't have any catch dogs and I'm kind of a shooter so I saw this video and I'm just thinking like if, if this were a, if there's a situation where a shooter has the advantage this is it okay so in this situation I'm sitting here I'm trying to figure out how to handle because the, the end of the hunt on a hog hunt is always a concern because these things can kill you, they can kill your dog, they damn sure hurt your dog. They got a dog that's you know recovering right now in rehab, you know. So it's 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 you know the end. You want it to go smoothly, but anyway, I'm always thinking about how I could get in there close with a gun, take a good shot, not get hurt, not get my dogs hurt, stuff like that. And I'm looking at these this sounder of hogs, bait up in um, the middle of. Nowhere. I mean, let's 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 we'll just, we'll just let some of this play again. I mean, I just, let's let's just let's just start it right about here. I mean, you got sounder hogs. I mean, listen, to the the dogs are. I'm sitting here thinking that from right here, with obviously I would need some kind of night vision. Maybe shoot one hog. If you had a silencer, I think you could keep the hogs calm. I think if you go busting out with a with a with an unmuzzled gun. The, the, the hogs would probably break up like they did when Trey was hollering. But I'm sitting there thinking about if I had a silencer and I could shoot one hog. Now, it'd be difficult with five dogs. I probably wouldn't want five dogs out there. But, you know, it'd be possible potentially. Well, shoot, before he just had Pearl. If Pearl's holding him, 
you know, one, one dog, maybe you could pluck one, two, three, four off. Um, so I don't know. I, I, you know, it's easy, easier said than done. This is the man who did this, not me. And I'm just, I'm just preparing. And I don't think we can prepare enough for moments like this. Because at this moment, how do you, you get, you, you came out with two hog. Congratulations. Listen, a lot of times this happens. You're covered up with game. It happens to all hunters. Bird, all the time for me, bird hunting, you're sitting there waiting for dove all day. And then all of a sudden here comes six right at you, right over you. What happens? You get none of them. You know, because you try to shoot all of them. So what do you do in this situation? He, he has two hogs, uh, incredible hunt. Um, but I'm just sitting here thinking that this could have been a good circumstance for shooting. Y'all let me know what you think. I, I, I mean, and I know guys love catching and everything. I, I'm not a huge hog hunter. And I have stabbed hogs with knives. And I think it's great. I'm just more of a big stick guy. And, and that's probably more me being uh, more of a hack. I mean, I just want that... Hog dead on my tailgate, high five the dogs, and, and we're on to the next one. But anyway, uh, and I'm sitting in this situation, it is a potential situation where I could have gotten, maybe I could have gotten two hogs, maybe I could have gotten three, I probably damn sure could have gotten one, okay, uh, with, with a gun from, from this distance, okay. So um, there's some other interesting things here. So I, I've, I've studied lacy dogs for a long time, um, and um, I can tell you, that the, 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 the history of the, of the Blue Lacey is um, a legacy that's pretty much referred to as the Lacey Hog Dog. And so they used these in Central Texas. So in pioneer days and early America days, uh, I'm going to call this 1850, 1850 to 1915 time frame. The main source of meat for Texans was not, um, was it beef? It, it was... Uh, Hogs, and, and, and they would literally clip the hog's ears with their clipping mark, if you're in an area, and then just turn them back out. And when it's time to round them up, you go round them up with horseback and dogs. And the story goes, I, 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 you know, that the, these lacy dogs could bring a sounder of hogs. Now, maybe they were somewhat more handleable than these, but they could move them into Marble Falls to the market where then they could be sold and bartered okay now i mean this this story runs so deep that i have old timers that i've interviewed specifically a man named jimmy brooks who actually drew this napkin diagram right here for me of of way it was explained to him that the hog pens at the marble falls market livestock market were okay and so i don't know if you can see this here very well but this gates here Bring the hogs in this way, and then the, these are raised openings here. So a dog has to be able to jump very high to get out, but the hogs can't get out. They're trapped in here. Okay, so when the, when the dogs get the hogs in here, they have to jump out or be killed. And that was apparently one of the reasons why Lacey's have, tend to have very good jumping abilities. Um, and maybe, maybe why they like to be jumping and on top of stuff. Because if you didn't, you got killed. Now these, this, no, no, Mike, no mistake. This, this sounder could, can kill dogs. Could kill multiple dogs. Could kill people. I mean, this is a dangerous circumstance. So when you're bringing hogs to a market like this, people get hurt messing around with hogs, all the time. They got to cut those teeth. But anyway, this is Jimmy Brooks' sketch. So I don't want to take credit for this, but he shared this with me, um, over a conversation we were having when I was interviewing him when I wrote the Texas Dog Manual. Okay, and, and so I've been always been looking for how could this happen, and the way he explained it to me is that the, 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 the way hogs kind of charge after the dogs, the dogs can antagonize the hogs so that they, the big boars will come after the dogs, thus moving the sounder. Okay, and, and, I, and in my observation, I've seen this happen with cattle too. Like the aggressive defender dominant cows, when the dogs come, you know, they may all hurt up, but some of those aggressive ones will go after the dogs and kind of follow them. And if a dog were trained to kind of get them to move, get them to move, get them to move, and maybe you had a couple of cowboys on horseback behind them kind of sorting stuff too, keeping them moving in that direction. But apparently they could move a sounder of hogs such as this. Maybe I've heard other theories that it was not, they couldn't have been that wild because they were handled once a year. Okay, I, I'm with you on all that. But I'm telling you that these dogs could move this sounder. And let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, see those hogs? 
See them? See them? Those dogs run out there, and those 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 boars come out and shoot out. They shoot right out. I see that. See them shoot out right there. And this sounder is actually moving left to right right now. So I, I'm just always looking for evidence and proof of something. So if someone tells me that a, a, a pack of lacy dogs can move a sounder of hogs, I'm looking for proof to back it up. I mean, I heard enough stories and stood in the field next to people that were the biggest talkers and seeing guys that were no shooters all my life, and I'm done. At this point in my life, if, if, if a man's not for real and can't prove it, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it take it with a grain of salt. And that's just is what it is. So if someone says that Lacey Dog can move a sound of hogs, I, I can look at this video and see that how it could happen. And I've seen it with cattle too. And, and we don't try, you know, so, so I can see where it happened, especially if you had horsemen pushing on back. And I, I don't think these, I don't know if these hogs would come back on a horse. I've never heard of a hog cutting a horse. I don't, I don't know how that works. But I'm just saying with these dogs holding this whole sounder together, as opposed to most all other hog dogs, what they're going to naturally do Talk to a lot of hog hunters. I've been on hog hunts. They, they train these hog dogs to just go in and focus on one hog. And they, and they, they breed them that way, and they train them that way, and they, they, they do bay competitions, that, that bay competitions, bay pin competitions, where they train them that way, and they got to focus on one hog and all this kind of stuff. But this gathering up a whole sounder is something I've heard about from other hunters, other lacy dog hunters. And I had a guy like Patrick who helped me when I was writing the Texas Dog Manual because I wasn't a big hunter. So Patrick was. And I said, Patrick, help me. What, what happens here? And, he, and then, you know, we're all done. And he pulls the Columbo on me. And he's like, oh, by the way, you do know that Lacey's will bay a whole sounder of hogs in an open field. And I'm like, no, tell me more, you know. And anyway, so, so it, it's, 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 it's something that, that happens with Lacey dogs. It can happen with other breeds, but I think it tends to happen with, with Lacey's and possibly Catahoulas. Catahoulas tend to windmill stock uh, like that as well. Um, but then again, the, the, the Catahoulas have really been you know, bred to kind of go after one hog. So I'm, I'm very interested in this situation where Lacey's are baying up a whole group of hogs and you know the, the, the potential for actually being able to take hogs, uh, multiple hogs out of a sounder as opposed to one. So usually generally what happens is you know, my dogs run them until they end up with one stuck in some brush or whatever. Maybe they have two and we can go, I can go over. I'm only, my dogs always get one. I've never done this. Okay, so again, kudos to Trey. Uh, man, I, I, I just, I, I love seeing it. So um, I, I, I don't know what else to say other than um, the really important uh, bit of data on Lacey hog dogs. Um, I think that's all I had to cover. So uh, feel free to let me know what you think. Um, like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you.